Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. If you'd like to learn how to compare the current week sales with that of last four, last eight, or last n, then stick around because this is exactly the topic of today's tutorial. As usual, I will upload my files to my blog, so you can look for the link to the blog in the description of the video. Let's look at the scenario that we're trying to implement. In my case, I have picked a week in my, in my calendar. So in my case, it's uh, week 31, year 2020. And I'm, I would like to be doing analysis for the last four weeks, which is an option that I have on this dropdown. Now that I've picked my last four weeks and I have my sales measure, I can create the average sales in the last four weeks or however many weeks I have picked in this dropdown. And then I can compare that average sales with my current week sales to try to understand what the trends are looking like. So for example, in, my, in this case, Sarah, this, this week sold $4.9,000 worth of products but in the last four weeks, she sold an average 3.7. Jane, however, this week sold $1.4,000. On average, in the last four weeks, she would sell $2.5,000 worth of product. Now I have selected last eight weeks, and uh, the yellow bars obviously would stay the same because these are the bars for the current week, but the blue bars have changed because now we're averaging over the last eight weeks. And we can see that Kathy this week sold $0.7,000, but on average in the last eight weeks, she would sell $2.2,000. So let's go through the steps necessary to implement the, this behavior. There's several things that needs to be done from the setup perspective. The first thing that we need to be able to do is we need to uniquely identify every week in our calendar. There are many ways to do this. You can create any kind of ID field. I concatenated my year column with the week number column, and that gave me a unique value for the year week. So here you see 2020, 31. That's the unique value for the week that I selected. The next thing that I did, I had to create a table that would give me the options for how many weeks back I would like to go. The table looks very simple. It only has three columns. The first one has the integer for how many weeks back we want to go. In my case, I only created a record, a table with three records, four, eight, and 16. I've also added a sort column. Because I want to be able to control how my records are sorted. And I've added the weeks number text. So this column number three is the one that I actually show in the dropdown. Now that we have the week number ID created and we have the table for the options in the dropdown created as well, we can work on our calculation. Let's take a look at how it works. So I named the calculation average last n week sales. And this calculation will work for however many weeks you've selected in the dropdown. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to figure out what weeks option you've selected. So the weeks number actually returns an integer. So you've said if you have selected last four, then the value that will be saved in this variable is four. If you have selected 16, then the value here will be 16. The next thing that we need to know is what is the value of the current week that you've selected? In our case, that value is 20, 20, 31. So let's talk through the approach. The way we're gonna do it is we know what the current week is. So what we need to do is, depending on how many last weeks we're gonna be comparing, we're gonna make a list of all of the weeks that are prior to the current week, excluding the current week. And we're gonna count however many weeks we've selected in our dropdown. So if somebody selected four, that we're going to select a list of the last four. And then once we have those weeks selected, we're going to calculate sales for all of those weeks, and then we're going to average them out. And that'll give us our desired outcome. So let's see how we achieve this goal. The first thing that we want to do is make that list of the last n weeks. The way we're going to do this is, we know that the values function will return all of the weeks that are currently available in our scope. However, by us selecting a current week, we're only, be able, we're only able to see that one week. So what we need to do is we need to remove the filter so we can see all weeks, and then we're gonna limit those weeks to only those that occur in the past. So that's what calculate table helps us with. So it'll remove the current filter of only one current week, and it's gonna put the new filter in. And the new filter will state, show me all of the weeks that are less than the current week. So if we're in week 31, then it's gonna give us all of the weeks that are less than 20, 20, 31. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna sort them and we're gonna just take the top however many that we've selected. So the top end function will pick however many that we need. So if we need to do four, then it's gonna say, okay, 
make a list of all of the weak numbers, select top n, order them descending, so we're going to take the last, the most recent n, and then this is what we're going to end up with by the time this top n command is run. So when the top n command is run, we're left with a single column table that contains the weak numbers, and those weak numbers we only have as many records as however many we've selected with our last 4, 8, or n. So for the sake of this example, let's say I've selected 8, so we're going to have 8 rows in that table. The next step that we want to do is we want to add our sales, weekly sales, to those values. And the function that's going to help us with that is add columns. So add columns is going to take our temp table with the last 8 weeks, excluding the current one. It's going to add a new column to it, name it temp sales and it's going to calculate the sales for all of those values. So by the time this piece of the code is wrong, we have a table that has two columns in it. The first column will have the weak number, and the second column will be named temp sales with the sales value in them. Lastly, all we need to do is use the average x command that will take that table and run the temp sales average for all of the records in that table. All we do then is we just return that average last weekly sales in our return statement. As the next step, I created a variable that calculates the variance between the current week sales and the last average number of weeks. And lastly, I've created a variance percent to last n week sales average measure. When I do variance analysis, I like to create two measures. I like to create the absolute value and the percentage. That helps me put things in context. And those work very well in the scatter plot that you could see here to the right. And that's about all I had to do to make this analysis possible. One thing you will notice is that in this chart here, I'm showing all possible scenarios, last 4, last 8, last 16. The way I got it to work was I just disable connectivity between this slicer and this chart in Edit Interactions section in the ribbon. So in my case, uh, we, were, we learned how to compare last 4, 8, and 16. But you can go ahead and add more rows to that table as long as you populated the number of weeks column correctly with the number of weeks to go back that function will work just fine this is not the only approach to implement this functionality but uh, i've been on a table functions kick lately so that allowed me to tie together my recent several videos with this interesting scenario hope you found this interesting and informative go ahead and download the tutorial materials on my blog Thank you for stopping by and hope to see you come back soon. Bye.